Here we are with episode 3 of Daza on Crater City. Hopefully this time it should be easier to understand. I reviewed episode 2 and the game sounds were far too loud and I was speaking too fast and gabbling and there wasn't a script and the editing was sloppy and all in all I wasn't very happy with it. Also, I realised it was too long. There should have been two episodes and I probably should have cut the slime farm section. Still, it's a learning experience and we all had to start somewhere, so hopefully this episode will be better. Now, you'll notice I've moved the bed onto the top of the house and also I have created this new walkway. It gives me commanding views over the whole of the capital area. As you can see, there's Vex's house, the capital building itself. And, in particular, it functions as a safe drop. Yes, I did solve that problem. As you can see, I have a swimming pool, and it's positioned directly under this enormous walkway leading from the top of the dome. It now looks like an enormous soap dispenser, or possibly a toucan without wings. Vexy says the house is now completely out of control, Although one of the new guys that's joined the server, uh, No Way Forever is his name, he says he really likes it, so power to you, No Way Forever. Uh, also, hello to Passion, who is another new guy who joined the server last night, although I haven't met him yet. Moving inside the house, there's a couple of things I want to show you. First of all, the sugar farm. You can still hear those doors next door, by the way. I'll come to that in a minute. First of all, we have removed this redstone that was annoying me and put doors here. In all, it's a little bit tidier than it used to be. I've slightly redone the walls around here too, so all of the redstone is now covered. One thing I will do, actually, is run the farm for you. As you can see, there's a certain amount of loss because I wasn't using blocks at the end of the pistons. That really is unavoidable due to space limitations. Those are now even worse because Guitar Flat has now built underneath this, so we really are hemmed in on all sides. The Senator, incidentally, has had a go with this sugar farm, and he has discovered that the yield is exactly the same as his sugar farm, which is quite surprising because they are completely different designs. One other thing that I may as well show you is there's a new tiny room off the left hand side of the house with a melon and pumpkin farm in it, if you can indeed call this a melon and pumpkin farm. Originally I was going to use this land as a stairway down to a lower level, but that's not really practical with the space limitations, so I thought I might as well put something here and really, this is about the only thing that would fit. Now we're going to go up to the dome because somebody has left a present in the dome, in the dome that I filled with water. I strongly suspect it may be Ogre, because some pumpkins were left on my top floor, and Guitar Flat told me that he thinks Ogre might have left them there. What on earth might he have left in my dome? Well, let's have a look and see if we can see it. There it is. It's a boat. Yes, somebody has been trying to ride around inside this dome. So... Let me get myself together, and we'll see if we can get it out without destroying the whole building. Oh, okay, I am ready, so let's go. Come on. Oh, that was harmless. You know, when I thought to myself, I'm going to record this because I know I'm going to make a mess of it, I didn't expect it would go that smoothly. Let me just check that there isn't anything else in there. Doesn't seem to be. Well, that's all very good. Mission accomplished. So while we're on our way to the top, I thought I might as well show you the drop again, only this time a bit more clearly. As you can see, it's only a sort of safe drop, because at this height, and there's no tunnel to keep you on the correct path, unfortunately it's always possible you could hit the walls if you're not careful. The trick is really to hug the wall as you're going across, and then when you come to the hole, you'll fall straight down. If you're living dangerously, jump. Yes, it's great fun. So what else have I done? 
Oh yes, I tracked down that door opening and closing problem. Remember the noise that I was hearing inside my house? Well, it turned out to be due to the prison after all, and it was in fact due to the battlements. The villagers would walk along the battlements and through the doors into these turrets, which they would treat as houses, annoyingly, and that was the sound I could hear. So I've removed the doors from the turrets, and instead I have put them on cells which I've built. Now I don't want to let this guy out. Oh, he's gone. Good. Let's see if we can get in. There we are. Now, there's three on one side, two on the other, and they all have beds. This is a four-star hotel, and uh, the villagers seem to love them. They go in and out of those doors all day long, and they're still trying to work out how to get out of these, but I'm not going to show you. No, I'm not. Go away. Go away. It's no good looking at the button. I'm not going to show you how to use it. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go on. I swear they're getting smarter. You may have also noticed this new birchwood bridge that I built yesterday. It doesn't connect to any existing roadway yet, although I'll probably connect it to this road here. It's quite handy for us, that's me and Guitar Flat, to have a route across this lake directly to the farms on the other side, such as the wool farm next to Vex's house. But as you can see, this would be quite a good place to have a road. And then we'd probably connect it to this intersection here. And also, I do think the bridge is quite nice in the view. You can see what I mean about this soap dispenser now. And maybe add wings to it, make it a bird? No, that's probably a step too far. I did also suggest to Guitar Flat that I could build a bridge across from my house to the top of his house. But he said if I did, he'd probably blow it up. That doesn't mean I won't do it. I think this chest marks where I killed Guitar Flat during a PvP session. I just stopped Fraps quickly so that everything did actually finish loading. As you can see, it's quite a nice view across here. And it reminded me that there's a building here that you haven't seen yet, if you only watch my channel, which is the Alchemy building. Uh, I did help in a little way building this mainly sorting out uh, a symmetry issue. Now, this is quite a clever device, and I don't claim any credit for the redstone, but simply you choose the effect you want. Now, we want, I suppose, a splash potion of increased duration, and we would like a strength potion. So you just press that, and out come all of the things you'll need to make it. It's really that easy. And it's a very clever idea. If you let your mind wander, it does actually look a bit like a face. As you can see, the eyes, the nose and the mouth. We noticed this while it was going up, and some of the guys that were restocking it, they used to jump out of the nose. And I suggested we should build an enormous head just so they could jump out of the nose of it. Surprisingly few takers on that, but uh, you never know. The gigantic head theme park may yet see the light of day. Well, we're coming to the end of episode 3, hopefully easier to understand, as I said. We'll just take a quick look at Passion's temporary house, although Ethan, no way forever, has, uh, says he's claimed it. I wonder what this is going to become. be interesting to see. It may yet be a competitor for the giant soap dispenser. One more thing, just regarding the video that uh, the Senator did, The Great Cat Caper, where I mentioned the cat that belonged to a friend of mine that came to a sticky end. I should just say they now think that's a fox attack. Now, personally, I'm a little bit sceptical about that because I live in an area with lots of foxes and I've never heard of them doing that. I mean, I know they do attack cats sometimes, but this is something else as far as I'm concerned. Still, I suppose it gives them closure about what happened to their pet and it's not really a very nice subject to dwell on. So, this is my office and I thought I might as well just show you this. And so far, the only things that I've had to observe that were particularly odd was irregular behaviour in Miguel's yard. I'll leave it to someone else to explain what that was all about. Yeah, it's a very pretty house and I won't have a word said against it. Well, that's the end of episode 3. 
Thanks very much for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. You as well.